Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, life has no doubt been much more stressful than normal. And prior to COVID-19, we all know and have experienced what it's like to go through an emotionally tough time. It actually takes its toll on us mentally, physically, and if you believe in all the woo-woo stuff, spiritually as well. Now, as a question, when you previously had gone through a tough time in your life, did you apply some form of a coping strategy? Um, that being something that actually makes you feel better than before you started it. Um, not a lot of us actually do this. And the reason being that when we're actually going through some of these tough times, we just can't see the forest for the trees. Our stress really clouds our thoughts, um, makes them quite foggy, and we just don't think clearly. And it's during these tough times that we actually need an outside perspective to help guide our way through and just get us to the other side. And lucky for us today, our special guest is going to do just that. And today we're here to talk about positive changes that you can make to help maintain your health and well-being with our special guest, Narelle King. Now, Narelle will share some tips for anyone looking for some support or someone just wanting to make some simple changes to their new stay at home lifestyle. Now that what we're going to talk about today, these are just ideas and they may just open the door as a new way of thinking for you, um, as a new option, um, and maybe something that you possibly hadn't considered before. Now, Narelle King is a yin and nidra yoga instructor and wellness coach for Simply Happy. Now she works um, with working mums who are always on the go um, and struggle with a constant juggle of work and family commitments that leave them exhausted and take a toll on their health and if that's listening for, for you listening at the moment and you're going that sounds like me well this chat is definitely for you Narelle thank you so much for joining us how are you doing today oh thank you Rachel thank you so much for having me and thanks for that beautiful welcome as well well we're really grateful for your time we know you're a busy lady as well now so much to talk about and um i just don't even know where to start because this is something i'm really passionate about and i just want to get all the information out as much as possible <laughs> as fast as possible now i guess for a lot of people listening they may start to get that feeling that this covid19 thing is not going away and it's not going away very quickly and um, it's going to be around for a little while longer and that we may need to um, continually or at least adjust um, our lives um, until they actually announce that they, they have found a vaccine because even even if we are um, you know going to be able to get out and about a little bit more these days it's still going to be around so you know because of this I think a lot of people are starting to um, really mentally suffer at the moment um, and in saying that they're probably holding in a lot more of their feelings um, and actually not admitting maybe to the, even themselves how they're at, how they're feeling it's coming the stress is coming out in other ways um and it's a little bit like being in a tunnel isn't it and not knowing where the end of the the um the tunnel is and where the light is so i'd love to know initially what your thoughts are um on on, on this well it's uh, it's the unpredictability that is really overwhelming for people like our brains like predictability and routines and then to have that taken away from us um yeah it gives us that feeling of overwhelm anxiety that we're maybe we're not used to and so it's yeah a way of trying to find some routines in our life that we can then cope and manage and not have that predictability back in our lives again yeah it's just having some form of certainty maybe in our lives mm. which, you know <laughs> can definitely, definitely. But, yeah, yeah definitely yeah and to help us cope, it's been said by many experts that we need to make some minor adjustments to our life, our lives to apply a coping strategy um, that works um, for our mind and body and spirit to, to basically help parents prevent um, burnout at the moment. Um, so I'd love to know from your perspective, um, you know, if, if someone is about to approach burnout, uh, what are the red flags that we would typically see and feel? So I know for myself, what here we week four, week four of learning at home. Definitely for myself, four weeks ago at the start, um, I could see myself. It was the tears came, the the losing my patience with my children, and realizing I need some help. So before that, my husband had been just working his normal work job, still within the house, but um, he's main, doing the same hours. And it was like him stepping back and just saying, I need some help here. I can't cope 
doing juggling a job as well as a business as well as um, two children and learning at home so um, he's actually doing two days um, so that I can still do my job I'm a teacher as well as well as um, my business as well so um, that's definitely helped by yeah the red flag though for me was just the tears that and definitely the um, meltdown so yeah we all have our meltdowns just like kids it just might take us as parents to get to that a lot longer and we keep putting sort of other strategy mechanisms in, in place maybe not the most positive things um, and then but eventually you know our body can't cope and we will sort of mouth down ourselves just like our children do yeah. so that to me is a red flag that there is um that we need some help and some other strategies to help us cope and just being honest with how we're actually feeling at the time as opposed to just constantly Definitely. sweeping it under the carpet and actually going, I, or I, numbing actually it. feeling this yeah 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 numbing it with other other ways but yeah dealing with it accepting okay i'm not coping and um i want yeah. some help and then it's yeah some other way to cope at the moment and i guess everyone has varying um and different levels of struggles and issues that they're dealing with and um everyone is dealing with stuff differently of course mm. um so what advice do you personally have for anyone that um maybe has identified okay okay i've got these red flags or and or i'm you know i'm honestly just not coping at the moment but where do i start mm. what's your advice so like going for myself it was like um putting that routine of exercise, I find exercise for me is, is such a great, powerful way of clearing my head, um, having that endorphin uh, release and just feeling happy at the start of the day. So definitely I, because obviously my routine of my normal exercise had been sort of taken away from me. So it was incorporating that back into my life again in, in a different form. Um, so yeah, doing a gym and sessions as well as um, walking. So I feel like our dog is getting more walks than <laughs> she normally would. She's like everyone's coping mechanism at the moment. I'll take the dog for a walk even though it's like she actually went for one this morning. So um, yeah, lots of walking. And then of course, um, yin uh, yoga as well. As well as actually I've been experimenting with a little bit of um, Kundalini Lindi yoga as well, which has been great. So it's sort of focused on, on breath work. Um, which I found to be an amazing, um, an, an amazing strategy and something I probably wouldn't have tried previous because life was so busy. So it's been really nice to try something a little bit different as well. Well, you know, in saying that, like you're a, a really big advocate for healthy natural therapies, um, as you just mentioned, the different types of yoga um, that, that you're into and that you teach as well. Um, so obviously a focus on natural therapies over unhealthy ones that are more of a, a quick fix um, pick me up type of solution. And as you said before, you know, trying to numb the pain and, <laughs> um, and, and that sort of stuff. So, you know, in your opinion, what's your best solutions for someone wanting to make a wellness change to their lives um, and real, and what is realistic to achieve um, during this time for someone that, that is a bit of a, a newbie? Um, and it, this is a bit of yeah. a pivot in their change in change in their life. What, what's realistic for them to be achieving? So definitely in the morning it's like trying to find some some form of routine starting of morning routine for yourself so you know this because this could be a parent who's a single parent and at home dealing with children by themselves so it would be putting some time aside possibly before the children get up and doing something for yourself whether it's sitting out on in the back garden with a cup of tea and just you know, just looking around and taking in a moment for yourself or maybe it's movement and doing something online, watching some sort of um, gym gym type um, workout or it might be a yoga session, depending on the time. Or maybe it's even just putting on some music and listening to some music. Just something that skips reading a book, something to give you something, some time for yourself to prioritise yourself because, you know, as the saying goes, you can't um, pour from an empty cup. And Love so if we're topping us, I know, as much as everyone says, you know, the same, you know, laughs, rolls their eyes, but really um, how can you give to those around you and be patient oh. all day long? If you haven't filled your cup. So for me, it definitely has to be in the morning, first thing in the morning. And maybe by the end of the day, it might need topping up. Definitely more so than I did, you know, previous to COVID-19. Yeah. So for someone that maybe hasn't applied those sort of techniques, how would you communicate what the rewards and benefits are 
of, of actually making that change and, and ensuring that you're actually giving that energy to yourself first before you, you know, you worry about the rest of the family. Well, there, and there's a couple of benefits because I know myself previous to a wellness coach, I didn't do this. And I've seen now my children even mimic me and say, oh, I'm just having some time for myself. <laughs> so it's great role modeling for kids as well. Um, Another technique is actually um, anchoring it to a habit you already do. So if, you know, we all brush our teeth in the morning, maybe it's um, unplugging your phone from the charger and it's putting that habit, that new habit to that already habit you're already doing. So um, it could be whatever it is, it's something that it's going to fill your cup and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's something I really, really enjoyed doing. So just looking back at things that you've enjoyed doing over your life and finding just one of those things that you could do in five to ten minutes and, you know, anchor it to a habit that you already do. Now, you're a busy mum of two children. And one was diagnosed with autism just two years ago. And it's been said that you came to an understanding of the importance of rest and making sure that your cup is full, as you said before. Um, and that with, with the focus of being able to continually be your best for your son and, and for the rest of the family. So can you tell us a little bit more about this and how um, since you've come to this realisation that it's actually made a positive shift in your life? Definitely. So before um, my son's diagnosis, I was, you know, running around juggling all the balls and trying not to let any of them drop. And, um, and life just had to slow down. I couldn't keep up that same pace. And to be able to support him, I really needed to prioritise rest. And for me to be able to be patient, calm, and to be able to listen to him and listen to his needs, I needed to really stop and really and really tune into myself and rest was something I needed. So I have practiced yoga for over 20 years, but it was the sort of yang style, flow style, fast, and that's what I thought I needed. But, you know, I, I'm a PE teacher, trained PE teacher as well. So, I yeah, I knew the benefits of exercise, but actually it wasn't the exercise I needed more of. It's actually the time and rest. So my practice actually changed to a more restorative practice. And that's when I started doing nidra, which is a sleep form of meditation and um, yin yoga. And that's holding the poses for a longer period of time. And there's no right or wrong way of doing it. And yeah, I fell in love with both of them from the benefits I got from the practice. So then from running retreats with busy mums, I was having instructors come in and do the the um the yoga for me it's like it's sort of a last year it was like well why am I not doing this to myself I'm a PE teacher I'm a coach it really made sense so I did my teacher training in yin and nidra um, yoga last year and now actually teach it myself teach the class as well as then on my retreat last year I actually did the sessions myself so that's sort of how I came around to um yeah, to yin and nidra yoga and then becoming an instructor myself. Yeah. And in saying that, I mean, everyone's got different coping strategies that works for them. Um, and alluding what you said before about the numbing effect, I think the alcohol consumption in this country, I heard it in a report the other day on TV, um, that is at an all time high. Um, but of course, um, and everyone's been there at the moment. It's just that whole breakup thing that they see that we're going through, you know, wanting to, um, you know, eat more sort of, um, fast foods and all those types of things. And it's almost like we've yeah. had a bit of a breakup with the way that life used to be before COVID-19 and, and alcohol consumption is sort of, you know, um, is that numbing effect that everyone you, know, you were talking about before. Um, but of course, you know, this, this particular, um, thing is is and is very unhealthy and it's not sort of not sustainable for you know long for the long term so if a if a parent listening hasn't yet i guess found what is their healthy coping strategy yet mm. in your opinion why is it so important that they actually make the time to discover what that is for them um during this time so i mean yeah, we all need that comfort at the moment. And whether it's, you know, chocolate for me or it's alcohol, um, but it's trying to find a maybe a more sustainable that actually when we come out of COVID-19, you can continue to use that practice yeah. within your lifestyle would be, a, you know, a great reason for looking for just that one thing. Um, you know, there's so many different things and the same, like, you know, 
people had suggested meditation years ago to me and it was it's it took me you know maybe two years to find the right form of meditation for me which was um nidra yoga like it's the it was uh, the slogan was uh you gain two hours of equivalent of two hours rest for your body from just 20 minutes practice and oh I was god like, that oh sounds <laughs> that was a selling minutes. point you have 20 get and, two and hours it, back yeah, and, and and I actually felt that. That to me was like that was. I was like, wow. Actually, I do feel like I've got two hours sleep, and I He's I was addicted from that from that moment. And um, it's actually even twenty minutes. Whereas I was trying to do five minute meditations, and I was like, this is just not for me. And I'm actually doing a longer meditation and finding it's more of a benefit than um, yeah than it just the five minute meditation was. And it's actually requiring more time, but. It is lying down when I go to bed and it's um, putting the headphones in and sometimes you fall asleep, especially at the start when you first start practicing. But over time, it's funny because you go into a sleep state. So at the very end, you know, whoever's guiding it will then say, and you come back into the room and you're like, oh, wow, where have I been? I actually feel like, <laughs> because it's amazing how it actually, because it um, accesses your subconscious mind into your um, sleep state, into one of your sleep states. So yeah, it's quite powerful and straight away. So I suppose, you know, it's like finding that one thing that's going to, you know, fill your cup as well as, um, as well as be that coping coping mechanism for you. So, you know, there's so many different things that you could use, but it's fine. I really think it's going back to things that you enjoyed before children, really. For me, I've always loved yoga. So it was going back to that, but just finding a different form that was more restorative and actually, you know, giving me that benefit that I needed rather than the yang benefit, which I didn't need in my life anymore. So um, Nidra Yoga, as you mentioned before, um, is some, actually, can you just tell us a little bit more about it? How is it different to other forms of yoga? So it's actually like, so it's the end of yoga. So the the traditional part of yoga is Nidra Yoga is the sleep part, which is the end and the Shavasana, they call it now. And it's shortened down to sort of five minutes because we have such a busy lifestyle and you they pretty much do it as a silence and then you walk out. Whereas traditionally in, um, in India, that need can be up to sort of 45 minutes and um, it's a guided meditation. So they go through different aspects of a meditation and it's like a body scan, which sometimes you might get with your Shavasana at the end. And then they'll take you through the consciousness of maybe it's uh, light and heavy or hot and cold and then um, bring you back into the room. And um, yeah, so because it takes you into a sleep state, it's um, giving you so many different benefits and that equivalent rest to yeah, two hours sleep for your body. So it's actually, um, oh, sorry, I was gonna say, it's actually eye rest as well. So they use it in hospitals. Um, it's been adapted slightly in hospital settings as well. And, you know, there is the eye rest has lots of research around it. So it's a research-based uh, yoga practice as well. So does this approach, I guess, support um, more of your immune system and it sort of helps sort of ca- calm the nervous system a little bit more, would you say? Completely. So it actually works on yeah, the nervous system, calming that, reducing our um, stress hormones, um, increasing cortisol into your um serotonin sorry into your body and taking away the cortisol and so mood sleep it's also really great for autoimmune diseases because it regulates your core body temperature and allergies as well Um, and especially the way that we live at the moment you know our core body temperatures are quite high from our lifestyle as well as like the foods that we eat can also generate um, heat in our body so um, this helps to sort of regulate that yeah, so there's so many, so many different benefits. So I, um, when I was 16, was diagnosed with MS. Um, I don't have it anymore because I've already politely told it to go away and it hasn't come back. But um, every time I hear the word autoimmune, my ears prick up, of course. So can you tell yeah. us a little bit more? That That's to do more, um, th- this this form of yoga in supporting the the, the nervous system. Tell us, um, do you, do you, or, can, or can you tell us a little bit more about that? Help and help. Sure. Help. Yeah. So it's sort of so it regulates your stress, uh, your rest and activity cycle as well. So one of the things at the moment is you know our 
our day and night, we're still at night time with lights and flashing lights and our bodies are out of sync of their natural cycle. And we, you know, the most restorative part of the day is between 10 and two for our body to actually recuperate itself and rest and um, let all of its, the whole organs regenerate themselves. And we're not allowing that. And also we're out of sync because of the lights, our lights, our lights just even in our cities as well as just within our homes. So we've sort of lost that natural rhythm. Um, so this actually helps to bring back that natural rhythm into your body as well. It's, um, yeah, and, and then along the same lines as the core body temperature by also, you know, our lifestyle with the heat that we have generated um, within our bodies, it um, helps to regulate that. So it helps to bring it back to where it needs to be um, by just allowing your body, your nervous system to rest and relax and, um, yeah, restore itself because it's taking you into that sleep state. So you're getting that sleep state before you're actually even asleep as well. So what yeah. changes did you personally start to notice um, when you started taking the classes then? So mine was overthinking. So especially when my son was going through his diagnosis, I was always overthinking going, okay, what can I do next? I'm an action taker. So I'm not the type of person who sit there and then just worry about it, but not do anything. I probably was like, worry about, okay, what am I going to do next? And researching, researching way too many things. So it helped to allow my brain to stop at night and actually sleep. So I wasn't getting enough sleep because I was always thinking, worrying about what, what I need to do, what I can do next to support him. So that was definitely the first thing is my sleep is a lot better. And then because of I'm getting a better sleep, my mood and the way that I'm with my children is definitely a lot calmer, more patience. Um, that's definitely something I've noticed the most is definitely patient with them. And what else would I say? Um, probably memory as well and appetite because I was living in stress mode and always on the go. So when we're living, living in stress mode, you know, you can have that green smoothie in the morning, but if you're, you're living on that stress, that your body's not actually, the digestive system's not working how it should be. So therefore that green smoothie you maybe drank is actually not even being digested properly and the nutrients taken out. So I definitely found that my appetite came back and I was eating, eat, I was already eating well, but I was actually probably absorbing the nutrients. So definitely my immune system, I yeah, don't get sick like I did. I was um, having a few health issues um, before, yeah, before his diagnosis as well. So those have definitely cleared up and, and I think it's a lot, a lot of it's come down to definitely Nidra yoga. Yeah. Mm, okay. Well, we'll definitely want to learn more about this. Now we <laughs> published your article, easy ways to exercise during isolation with limited time and equipment. So for someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview about it and just tell us what inspired you to write it? So it was about the, the, the yin, being able to use the yin yoga, which again, like I said before, is um, about restorative part of um, yoga. So we have our flow states and then this one is really quiet, really restorative and really works on our rest. Again, our nervous system, so taking away that stress and any, it actually helps to heal your body if you have been living in constant stress mode like I was. Um, so I wrote the article in relation to yin because I was also, for myself, I was taking physical classes here in Geelong and now I've moved my practice to online and being able to help the, the parents and the mums and, and, and some older people that I was also working with at a um, lifestyle centre giving them that access so they could do this online as well. So it just encouraged me to write the article so that I could show that there's lots of different ways that you can exercise now that we're in um, self-isolation. And, and one of those really great ways, I think, is um, yin yoga. I I've, I've really see it as a really beneficial um, exercise, form of exercise, especially while we're um, at the moment overthinking, you know, everything's changed. There's so much uncertainty and we're living in that stress mode. Even though it's not the same stress, it's still stress mode on our body. Um, even though it's not like running around, we're still the worry. The worry, you know, triggers that stress response. 
it's a bit like an account. So you see our stress is like the withdrawal uh, from your bank account and things like Nidra or um, Yin Yoga is like the deposit. So we need these oh, deposits put back. Isn't it beautiful? I, I heard it a couple of years ago. and I, I love referring back to it. Those deposits is putting it back into your nervous system. Um, yeah, so that you can continue to cope. So I suppose that's like that way of looking at the filling your cup is another way is the stress is the withdrawal of a bank account and we need something to put back in. Otherwise, yeah, we're in, um, in deficit and we can't <laughs> live like that, can we? <laughs> so and you mentioned before about the online program which you're running. Um, why do you think it's um, accountability with these sort of programs is so important? Um, you know, irrespective of it's, if it's just during now mm. in this time or in, in general, I guess when someone's sort of starting something new um, and especially when it is remote, um, which is, which is great, which is brilliant and gives the ability for, for far more people, um, you know, um, you know, right throughout the country and nationally to be able to have mm. access to the program. But why do you think accountability is so important? Definitely. Like uh, uh, the people who come to my actual regular classes, like they pay for a term to come because they love that accountability, knowing that I've paid for it. Therefore I'm putting myself first. I have that set time. I have that set, you know, that routine that they're working towards building. So having that there every week really, really helps them to set up that new routine. Um, so as few of them have said, it's been really, really difficult to find that consistent time like it is a live session that I do tonight but it's recorded so they can access it anytime so it's trying to um, establish that new routine in their lives but giving them that access anytime 24 7 has been great as well because you know they can now they've still got that accountability that there's someone and they can reach out well I have a Facebook community which is great because they might have had a tough week and it's great to be able to say hey I've had a tough week um, even I've even gone as far as saying here, here's a direct link to the YouTube video. So you don't even have to go online and find it. It's just straight into their messenger. Um, so yeah, just, just being able to give it, make it easy for people to access as well, I think is um, really important at the moment because mm. people have so much, mum, parents in particular who are juggling work, kids and learning at home already have enough going on as well as, you know, the school emails and everything. So to make things as easy as possible for people, I think is great as well as yeah just having that support for them to be able to build in those new routines and mindfulness is a phrase and, and a word that we hear so much but can you tell us a little bit more how it can um, help us reduce stress and um, just help support our immune system yeah so mindfulness is like being in the moment and I'm sure you can everyone can relate to that time when you've driven your car and you've got to work and you're like oh my goodness what I kind of remember how I got here mm -hmm. so it's actually just being present <laughs> in the moment when you're doing something so it could be even making dinner and and I've heard so many people talk about online at the moment through podcasts about how they feel that they're being so much more mindful at the moment with their lives, with their children, they're listening to their children, they're, they're cooking dinner together, they're sharing moments together and just being in that flow state. So not thinking about when we have to be at the next thing and or running time. From one time, time to another. Yeah. yeah. Having to yeah, be. Yeah. So that, yeah. So just being in the moment and enjoying it for what it is rather than thinking about the future or thinking about the past. Um, so yeah, Very definitely true. it's, it's probably a perfect time to us to be adapting that whole new way of thinking of mindfulness. And for me, like I see, um, working in several different schools, I also see how children have adapted it and that it's like part of their lives in, in within schools, schools do it every day, mindfulness when they come in after lunch. So, um, it's sort of like us taking a leaf out of our own children's, um, you know, way of life and, yeah. and bringing it into the home really. So definitely tapping into our kids who, you know, who, who know, you could ask them, I'm sure they can find a YouTube video right now of a mindfulness, um, music that they really enjoy or they listen to at school. So yeah, using our kids, I think is a real key. And what would be, I guess, your top three ideas for people to create um, more mindful routines in their day-to-day -day life then? 
Definitely like going on the, like I said at the start about habit. So finding a habit that you already do and being mindful around it, all connecting breath to it. So breath is really, really important. It's a really powerful tool that we all have. And we forget that we have our breath will actually calm our nervous system straight away. So you can't worry while you're focusing on your breath. So maybe while you're brushing your teeth, as soon as you've finished brushing your teeth, um, it's taking those three deep breaths and you know you've done that one part of mindfulness maybe brushing the teeth in a mindful way and then actually doing um the three breaths at the end the second way would be um tuning into sort of your senses so really getting in touch you know when you eat that chocolate or you have that glass of wine really enjoy it and savor the the taste of it um you know, then, then you're getting a little bit of both, aren't you? You're getting that moment at the end of the week that you might be craving it, but you're doing it in a mindful way. So you could be using, you know, both of those um, benefits. So we're not saying get rid of all of the old habits, but maybe integrating some of these other ones as well. I'm all about trying to make things um, just add it, not adding extra things to your workload. So what, finding ways that will incorporate what you've already got um, within busy mums that I work with when I'm coaching. Um, the third way would be looking at life like with curious eyes like children do. Yes. So, yeah, like when you're going for a walk, and, and I find right now like when we go for a walk um, in the middle of the day just to get out because my, my son would actually like to just stay at home. He's actually a homebody but he likes us to entertain him the whole time. So we all just need the space to get out. So it's um, getting out. And I just find that there's people out in their front yards at the moment um, in nearly every second house. And so it's being able to stop and have a bit of a chat to neighbours. So just being mindful while you're actually walking rather than going on the walk and, you know, just trying to get it done in the 10 minutes, but actually taking in some of the surroundings, the people who are in their front yard or the flowers that have come out in someone's yard at the moment, or like my kids today even said, did you see all the trees have started to turn um, yellow, the leaves? So yeah, that, that'd be my three tips for integrating mindfulness into your life without adding something else to your to-do list really. And this is the thing, it was almost like, you know, life was in fifth or sixth, sixth gear leading up to COVID, you know, the year was getting started and we're, you know, really starting to sort of be on our way um, which is with business and, and life getting, you know, the kids starting with their hobbies and everything else. Um, and now it's almost like bringing it back to second, first or second or Definitely. third years, depending. And it's almost yeah. um, uh, like you're talking about going for walks and those types of things. There's been so many times in the last few weeks, I've almost felt like, and because the pace is, is obviously slower and mm. there's not as many cars on the road. And, and a lot yep. of people are, um, have got open fireplaces and things like that in their house and you, that beautiful smell of smoke and everything else. And it's just like, I feel like I'm on holidays, which we're not, but it's, it's that beautiful yeah. pace of life where it's just that you, you can just breathe. Um, and it's mm. about you know, maybe just, and I'm asking you as the expert, but is, is, is it about taking those moments and actually really savoring them um, as opposed to just, just, you know, living living them and not really sort of you know taking notice of what it is it's taking taking note of what that, that, that feeling is and what that's that smell is mm. and those types of things is that what you're saying with the mindfulness yeah definitely it is and just being in the moment because when we're worrying about the future or worrying about the past that's when we put the stress on our nervous system so if we can just be more present and I, I definitely agree like the walking around and the fires I've noticed my kids are always going to it smells like someone else is having like a camping fire tonight so yeah we've noticed that in our area for sure yeah and so going back to what you're talking about with nidra uh, yin and nidra yoga could you just tell us a little bit more of what the benefits are of um sort of practicing that on, on a regular basis um you touched on it earlier on but i'd love to know a little bit more about that and um and why why should people i guess consider um sort of at least trialing it Yep. So with yin yoga, um, it's, you know, it's, it's relaxing into the shapes for a longer period of time and like sort of between three and five minutes. And it focuses on the chi energy in our meridian pathways. So it is based on Chinese medicine and we hold lots of emotions in our bodies. And by opening up these pathways, we actually release those emotions. And so it actually works with the different pathways, but different, there's like a yin body part and a yang body part, and they work in partners 
during seasons of the year as well. So we're going in, we're in um, autumn at the moment, going into winter, we're focusing on our kidneys and our bladder. And, and so they are around fear, whereas at the, um, sorry, sadness and um, grief. And right now in autumn, we're focusing on fear. So fear around change maybe as well could be something. So by holding these shapes and then going into a recoil after, we actually help to release those emotions that we might be holding on to in our body, as well as just the benefits of relaxation and, um, and the stretching of the different body parts and muscles and tendons. And yeah, and the fascia is what they focus on in, in yin. And then with nidra, so I sort of do both together, but then I also do some of my classes as just nidra classes for people who, who, who don't like um, yoga. Some of them have come around and are like, yeah, now I, can, I think I could do both. Um, but it's definitely around slowing down your, your mind, allowing your body to rest, allowing your body, your nervous system to you know, regulate itself and actually heal. So if you have been living in stress mode, it does help to heal your nervous system. And then around the autoimmune diseases, helping them um, to regulate the, the core body temperature as well that's related to autoimmune diseases. And um, what else is there? Oh, around mood. So definitely improves um, mood mood, sleep, um, gut health as well is really important. And I mean, like people, this is another thing that sort of catches people is when I talk about, well, you know, how can you, how can you try to lose weight if you're constantly on the go and your body is in stress mode? You need to actually relax to allow your, your body to be able to then, because again, it's not functioning at its best, is it? And if yep. we don't have enough rest, you know, rest, sleep is, just, I suppose I've become more of a sleep and rest expert is what, you know, that I'm more of a, or more passionate about, you know, sharing with people of how important it really is. And it really is fundamental to, to us because as I say, you know, contrary to what we say is uh, rest is actually productive time. So for us to be able to be so productive, we really need to rest. And I know myself, if I've worked late into the night, the next day, I definitely nowhere near as productive if I had have stopped earlier and um, and got that rest and then just got up maybe a bit earlier instead. Yeah. Well, you've shared some really, really key points today. And um, as we mentioned at the start of it, there's going to be a lot that maybe is quite new for a lot of listeners um, and, and, and viewers um, to consider. So if you were to summarise, I guess, your, your key points and key messages um, about, you know, trialling something new um, to, to, to be able to adapt a, a better wellness coping strategy at the moment, um, I guess, what are your key messages? So probably my first one would be attach one of these new habits to a habit you already do. Um, they call it habit stacking rather than trying to create a brand new habit. The other thing would be looking at finding some time for yourself to do just one thing to, um, to yeah, prioritise yourself. Like we said before about the deposit, make sure that you're, um, you know, as well as withdrawing, but actually depositing things into yourself, the money, like the money account analogy. Love that. And then rest. Yeah, isn't it great? Um, prioritizing rest. And rest really is that productive time. Um, actually helps us to be more productive, even though we don't think it is. It actually is. And our benefit, our bodies will benefit greatly, um, mind, body and spirit as well. Well, I know I've personally greatly um, benefited from this chat today and it's, it's something that I want to look into um, and I, I guess sort of bring into my daily life. So if, if parents have got more questions for you and or want to, I guess, even join your online program or just have any questions or anything like that, whereabouts can they find you? Sure. So simply happy com.au is my website or otherwise on social media so i have um facebook is simply happy wellness coaching and the same for instagram and yeah i love being on instagram but to be honest the mums that i work with are all on um on facebook so yeah i use both and yeah i'd love it i do have some free videos of yin yoga shapes so people can actually be introduced to it rather than going straight into a sequence and expecting to be able to do it so it's giving them a slow into um introduction to the shapes and then a sequence and as well as that a free nidra recording as well so they can experience the benefits of that 
Yep. And my last question is, does someone have needed to actually done yoga before uh, to, I guess, to be able to, to get into um, Nidri in, in yoga or, and, or um, is, is it fine for an absolute beginner? Absolute beginner. And you do not need any yoga experience. And I think that's why I, you know, love it so much is because the people I work with don't necessarily at all do not, are not a yoga type of person. So it's been great to be able to share this with people who are like, oh, actually this is, you don't need to, yeah, don't have to have any experience. (laughs) Um, And I also work with, you know, people who are, you know, from 50 to 70 as well, and they get great benefits. And, you know, it's really easy to modify some of the yin poses to be sitting in a chair as well, which is great. But they do, they've all, they've all fell in love with Nidra yoga and are really disappointed and can't wait till I come back to be able to do that with them as well. They have the recording, but it's not the same as being in a room and someone actually helping you go to sleep into that rest state as well. Well, look, we'll have all those links in the, uh, in the show notes and the introduction paragraph. Thank you so much for your time today and uh, really can't wait to chat with you again soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.